Hey, what's going on guys? It's Adam from Spiritus Systems and this is another installment of Team Room Tuesday. So today we're gonna be talking about something near and dear to my heart, something I love doing uh, as often as I can and that is flying on an airplane commercially with a firearm. Uh, lots of considerations when you're, uh, when you're flying. Lots of rules, lots of regulations, they're constantly changing and uh, no one at the airport seems to understand uh, what the rules really are. So today we're going to give you a guide uh, and it is a guide. The first thing I'm going to say is that you should always check 24 hours before you fly. You should get on the TSA website, you should get on your airline carriers website and you should look at the rules and regulations because they do change quite frequently. So the first thing we're going to talk about is how we store the firearm. Uh, what we, and what we store it inside of. So, per regulations on most airlines and definitely with the TSA, your firearm has to be stored in an unloaded configuration inside of a hard case that can be locked. Right here we have a Pelican case, it's a 1700. This is uh, kind of your standard M4 carbine sized case. Uh, but it could be any Pelican case, honestly, as long as it locks, it doesn't even have to be a Pelican. It can just be another hard-sided case. Uh, you can see this one has four lock points on it. Two of those are reinforced and two of those are not. Uh, I have four padlocks on the outside. And uh, you do, in fact, need to have a lock for every hole that is on your case. So that's kind of the first tip that I want to give to you guys, is that make sure you have enough locks to go into every single hole. If you don't, if you're missing some of those locks, they may just turn you away or they may offer to sell you some locks. So best case, you get some locks, you, you spend a couple dollars, or worst case, you get turned away and you miss your flight. So uh, definitely have a lock for each hole. Uh, I usually don't put my padlocks on the case when I get into the airport, I just keep it unlocked. That way it's a little easier for me to just open the case, show the person that it's unloaded and get on with my life. Another reason we wanna have a lock for every single lock point, which is not a, a bad uh, reason to have extra locks, is that if one of these locks breaks off in a transit, then you will be able to still have your case completely secured. If there's only two locks on here and one of the locks were to break off, then you could actually open you know, all the latches on the case and you could pry your way inside and, uh, and extract some of the items uh, out of the case. So when we talk about locks specifically, I prefer to use uh, non-TSA locks. Now the regulation has been kind of ambiguous over the years. I've seen it written as it can only be non-TSA locks. Now uh, the regulation from TSA at the time of this video states that you could have TSA locks as well, which if you don't know what a TSA lock is, it's essentially a, a, some, some sort of padlock that you can uh, have a key for or a combo, but TSA can also gain access to it by using a master key that pretty much anybody could get a hold of, so they're not very secure. Uh, they just mainly keep honest people out of your luggage. But it allows TSA to get into your case, which I'm not really comfortable doing. I want to minimize access to the case simply because there is a firearm in it and there could be potentially ammo in it as well. Uh, so I prefer non-TSA padlocks and I always choose combo locks. And the reason that I choose combo locks is that when we put our case you know, into the airline system, it's gonna go first to a TSA system to be scanned and you know, ex you know, exploited and all of that stuff. They're gonna look inside of it. Uh, they're gonna play with all of your stuff. They're gonna take out your fancy pistols and probably drop them on the ground. Uh, they're gonna do all sorts of weird stuff to the inside of your case. If you've ever had your luggage searched, you'll see that mysteriously all of your underwear are turned inside out, which is, is strange. So they're gonna do the same thing to your gun case. If they decide to search your case after you're already through security, you're gonna to have to come back out and open the case for them if it's a keyed lock, which for me multiple times now has almost caused me to miss my flight because you know they're not gonna give you any help going back out of security and coming back through. You're completely at the mercy of the TSA at that point. Uh, and as one TSA agent in Arkansas told me so eloquently, it's not his problem, it is my problem. So combo locks because you can just tell the gate agent your combination they can tell the TSA guy he can look through all your stuff 
and then you can put the locks back on and you can stay uh, through security. It's gonna open this bad boy up now. So keep in mind, seriously keep in mind though that when removing your locks, uh, if your case is damaged in transit, if one of these locks gets busted off, uh, it's, it's over for that case. You may sneak through security again with it on your outbound flight, but chances are they're gonna say, you know, that it's a broken case and that it cannot be properly locked. So I would not play the roulette game with uh, security, which is a strategy. Some guys will carry, you know, this is a specific gun case. A lot of guys will carry uh, like a 1610 or some other type of Pelican that they will store their other items in, which is completely fine. Uh, according to TSA regulation, as long as you can lock the case, it doesn't matter what's in the case. So you could have all of your clothing as well as your handgun or, you know, all of your equipment and your rifle in the same case. And then you could have two cases that are exactly identical. That way, if one breaks, you can just rotate it with the firearms case. Just put the firearm in the other case and, and put that through, which is a good strategy for uh, traveling because, you know, I see a lot of locks. Uh, get busted off Pelican cases. Uh, they, they just don't treat our luggage well when it goes, you know, disappears behind the veil there into uh, baggage claim. So another tip for the external piece of this uh, is tape. This is gaffer's tape. It's pretty expensive. It's a cloth tape. It doesn't leave a lot of residue and it's, uh, it's not going to stick in a way that you just can't remove pretty easily. But you can use duct tape. That'll work as well. Uh, this was actually a tip from Chad at B. Meyer. So shout out to Chad. Uh, if you need to buy lasers, give him a call. But this is a very good tip. Basically what you do is you take your lock, you uh, put it on. Once you've declared the firearm and they have told you to close your case back up, you relock it and then you tape down all of those locks. And that way uh, these locks aren't, you know, flinging around and getting caught on stuff and getting ripped off. It's just another way to kind of secure the lock so you don't run into that scenario where your, your case is now broken. So something that I recommend doing. I'm gonna flip this up too, just to show you something right here. Another thing that I like to do, I like to take a business card, if you have a business card, if you're fancy, if not, just a note card with your contact information and I just clear tape it on the outside. It's easy to remove if you don't want it on there anymore, but that is gonna be just another way for somebody to contact you if your firearm is sitting in a weird spot, right? The airlines do mess up. They're pretty good with firearms, honestly, but they can you know, make mistakes, so you always wanna have your contact information on the outside. I recommend not putting a lot of stickers and things like that on the outside of your gun case. Just keep it pretty ambiguous. That way uh, nobody really understands exactly what's inside of the case. So inside of the case, uh, there's a couple of considerations as well. First thing we're gonna talk about is the firearm itself. When you travel with a firearm, it has to be in an unloaded configuration. It doesn't matter if it's broken in half, like this AR carbine can be broken in half, uh, but it does tend to confuse the gate agents. You really have to remember that most gate agents are probably very unfamiliar with firearms. This is probably not their hobby, their weekend hobby. Uh, they're gonna be maybe a little nervous. They're not gonna understand. A question that I always ask is, that they ask me, Adam, is the firearm unloaded? And I say, do you know how to check if this firearm's unloaded? And generally they say, no, I don't know. So they're just really relying on you to kind of help them out. So being polite and nice goes a long way with this and just kind of guiding them through maybe that your firearm is unloaded. So they are going to make you declare that and you should just have your firearm already unloaded. You should not be going to the airport with a loaded firearm. Please do not do that. Uh, it will cause you a lot of grief. One of the things that I do though, and it's just an added step, but I think it's a pretty critical one, is I use cable locks. So these locks are very common. You can buy them off Amazon. They're not very secure. Uh, you could definitely defeat this lock very easily, but that's not the point of it. The point of it is that I can put this into my, uh, my pistol or my rifle, and I can make sure that if TSA is messing around in my case uh, without me present, that at least they cannot get the firearm functioning at least not when they just pull it out of the case, right? So if some TSA guy is having a bad day and he decides to pull my rifle out of the case and load a magazine into it, um, you know, he just can't because this will be in there locking it down. They can still see if the weapon is clear with this, which is really not their function, but 
yeah, so these cable locks, they're cheap, they're easy, you probably have 10 lying around because you probably have a bunch of pistols that you bought and they come with your pistol. I keep this DACA pouch, is kind of the next thing that I, I always travel with inside of my case. And the first thing that I throw in there every time is my firearms unloaded declaration. This is given to you by the airline and they're gonna make you sign it. And this is just a little liability thing that they like to do. It'll have the agent number on it. So that is whoever, you know, whatever their little serial number is. And then it'll have your signature and the date. So make sure you have somewhere you can put that. It's easy to find. I keep all my documentation in a DACA pouch. Uh, this is a, if you don't know what a DACA pouch is, it's from Magpul. Uh, it's just a little zippered pouch. So I throw that in there. Make sure this makes it into your case. If, if this is not in your case, TSA will kick it back out of security and you'll have to go through a huge uh, ordeal to you know, put it back in the case. So don't put it in your pocket. I always just immediately put it inside the case once they give it to me. So that's kind of the first thing. Second thing I always carry is 24 hours before my flight, I print off my airline's regulations on firearms transportation. And then I also print off the TSA regulations on firearms transportation. I have these on me not to, uh, you know, kind of what if or to be belligerent with a gate agent or a TSA. I have it on so that we can, well, one, I can reference it. Maybe I have a misunderstanding or I can help a gate agent or a TSA employee understand the regulation. They may not have dealt with firearms very much, so they just don't understand what the regulation says. It has helped me out a ton of times because when you show them that their own website says this is how you're supposed to do something, a lot of these kind of like telephone game, rumor mill, policy changes that they want to do on the fly just don't work because it's right there in the documentation. So I always keep that in there. I also always keep, for me, my FFL information, uh, but for you, it may be your tax stamp for your suppressors. So if you have a, a suppressor and you have a tax stamp, I recommend having it inside your paperwork, a copy of it, not the original, copies of it wherever you go with your firearm, just to keep the ATF happy and off of your back. Uh, you should be following all of your ATF compliance with your class three items so that you are not uh, getting held up anywhere out of state. And then lastly, in that pouch, I carry this little guy, which if you're unfamiliar with this, this is an Apple AirTag. And what is an AirTag? If you don't know, an AirTag is a little tracking bug, essentially. Uh, but you can use these, you can put them in anything, really. But I put it inside the case, it allows you to name the case, and then you can track it on your phone, wherever it is, geographically. I just do that again, in case there's ever a time where my case kind of you know, goes somewhere else that it's not supposed to be, I will know where that case is. I mean, unless somebody removes it nefariously, but you know, for just tracking it, going from airport to airport, it's just a little peace of mind. So that's in my document pouch. That's how I track things. And that's how I make sure that TSA and my gate agent and I are all on the same page, literally with regulations. Ammo is the other thing that you're probably gonna be transporting. Uh, and if you're transporting bulk ammo, an airline is just not the answer. I think right now, currently, it's 11 pounds of ammunition. So that's not gonna get you probably enough ammo to even take a class. So I recommend shipping your ammo well in advance to the class if you can, uh, instead of trying to take it on to the, to the airline. But if you're concealed carrying, or if you're traveling in some kind of duty capacity, and you need to have uh, your ammunition with you, but you're flying commercial, then uh, 11 pounds is that limit. The safest way, the absolute safest way to travel is utilizing the factory boxes for the ammunition. So if you save a couple and you can just, you know, stick the ammunition back into it, that is the, the safest way, that is like the surefire way to get them to just leave you alone about it. It's in the manufacturer's box. The regulation specifies manufacturer's box. It doesn't say that's the only way you can transport it. But I feel like when they read that, they just feel like this is a, a safer, you know, way to do it. So if you have this, they're just gonna leave you alone. I prefer to travel with uh, like these little plastic cases. This is a company, uh, it's MTM Case Guard is what this is called. You can find these at pretty much any gun store. And I like these because I can carry a little bit more ammo inside of it. So this is for 5.56 cartridges and this is 100 rounds. All right, so you can see inside there, every round 
according to regulation, is separated from every other round in its own little slot. It's very easy for me to see that it's full. I did modify this one. Uh, it does have a foam little insert on the top, so this to prevent rattling and my ammo from getting banged up from, from being in a Pelican and getting literally WWE'd by the freaking support staff at the airport. I also put a Ranger band over the lid just to make sure that it doesn't come undone in transit. And then on the top, you can see I write what it is and I write how much it weighs. Again, just trying to work with the airlines here so that they feel comfortable with like the weight of this item so they know that it's not over 11 pounds. So I'll take one of those for rifle. And then if you're a concealed carry guy or if you're carrying your pistol, same thing, just a smaller case. Just opens up, you can see critical duty, Hornady stuff in there. Each, each cartridge is separate. Nice click case, uh, same brand as the last one. And I just write the weight and the type of ammo on the outside. And then again, I just put a Ranger band over it just to keep it closed. Magazines are a fun one because for years we got away with just packaging our ammunition in magazines and transporting it that way. Uh, recently, I feel like the airlines have been cracking down more on it, uh, but you might have a different experience. I don't travel with ammo in the magazines anymore. I download the ammunition into those cases and I travel with empty mags. For my staccato, where the mags are quite expensive and, uh, and they're metal, I don't want them banging around inside my case. I just ranger band them together just to keep them a little more static. Uh, and I just pack them inside the case with my firearm. So kind of in closing, really the takeaway points here are to make sure you know the regulations at least 24 hours before you fly. I really, really recommend looking them up 24 hours in advance. Even if you feel like you've flown a thousand times with a rifle, look it up, print off those regulations, make sure you read them and make sure you know them so that you're not running into any snags. Uh, I also travel to the airport three hours in advance, often when I'm carrying firearms. It just gives me that little bit extra time to like kind of work through any issues that might arise, maybe call a friend or something if I need uh, to get an extra lock or something like that. You know, it just saves me a lot of headache from potentially missing my flight. So guys, if you're enjoying these videos, we're trying to get these Team Room Tuesdays out to you as often as possible. Do me a favor, subscribe to the channel. That lets us know if we're moving in the right direction like the videos, you know, I think there's like a notification bell, you know, all of the cliche stuff that a YouTube uh, superstar is gonna tell you to do. We would appreciate it if you did those things as well. It helps us grow the channel. It helps us fund these videos and to continue to give you good information. So thanks for watching this time and we'll see you next week.